Welcome, paleontologists! This is it, the field assignment you've been preparing for your entire life. Over a dozen dinosaur fossils lie buried in a huge slab of rock. Time and the relentless forces of geology have mixed up the bodies, but that's a small problem for your team. For now, sharpen your chisels and ready that hammer. It's time to get cracking and liberate those precious fossils from their rocky tomb. For the good of science, and your own reputation, be sure to claim the biggest and best fossils for yourself. Hey, Meeple people, how's it going? And on today's vlog, we are going to be playing Jurassic Parts by 25th Century Games. Sarah, can you please do a little bit of overview and tell us a little bit more about this game? Sure. So this game is for two to five players. It takes about 20 to 45 minutes to play. And in this game, we are um, paleontologists and we are exploring this field here looking for um, fossilized dinosaur remains. And um, we are going to be collecting those remains and attempting to complete dinosaur skeletal structures um, and collections of fossils, and those will score us points. Uh, the game is going to end when all of the tiles here have been um, removed from the board, and then we will add up all of our points, and whoever has the most points wins. So um, it's pretty simple. On your turn, you're going to start by sharpening three of your chisels. So we start with a collection of dull chisels. And the very first thing I do on my turn is I sharpen three chisels. So I just move them from kind of like their exhausted side to their ready side. So that's the first thing I do. And then the next thing I can do is I can use these chisels to work on the field out here. Um, and during this part of the, the game, I can also interact with our field leader here. Um, and he lets me sell tiles um, or amber to him in order to acquire different abilities or different resources or that kind of thing. So I can interact with him on my turn at any point uh, after I sharpen my chisels. And then I can use these chisels, these sharp chisels that I now have, um, to attempt to break up some of the, the fossil bed that we're working on. And the way that I do this is I will just take my sharp chisels and I can place them in between any... Um, any pieces out here. So if I wanted to, I could start right here and I could just kind of break this up a little bit. Um, I could also like go all the way out here if I wanted to um, and break this up a little bit. The only thing I can't do is I can't put a chisel on the edge of the map. Um, so I can spend um, as many chisels as I want, but I'm probably going to want to spend at least all but one. And you can spend all of them if you want to. And the reason that I'm going to want to spend so many is because players can only keep one sharpened chisel uh, sharp in between turns. So if I didn't spend all of mine, I could leave this over here. But if I hadn't spent this one either, then this would just go back to my dull chisel supply. So probably I want to be out here chiseling away at these uh, fossil formations. What's going to happen is eventually players are going to have formed a line. Let's start over here. Players are going to have formed a line of fossils, which will eventually break off uh, pieces of the fossil layer. Like this, for example. Now, other players can do this as well. So if Nick had helped me excavate these fossils. Some of these chisels might be his chisels instead of mine. So this is the last one I need. I break off this section right here. Now, this is going to break this fossil layer away from this one right here. And if these were um, misproportioned pieces, like we have here where this one is clearly much bigger than this one here, then the player takes the smaller section. If they're equal, then the player decides which section that they want to take. Um, so what's going to happen is I'm going to take all three of these tiles right here and I am going to get to choose half of these. So I reveal the ones that were face down. I get to choose half rounded up of these tiles here that I've excavated. So maybe I decide that I want to keep these two and not this one. Um, if I'm the only player who made the break, then whatever I don't take goes to our field leader and that can be purchased um, in future turns by me or other players. If Nick had helped me, let's let me get one of your chisels, Nikki. Sure. So let's pretend that Nick had helped it with this situation here. Um, I would, because I was the leader of this expedition where I supplied more of the chisels than anybody else, I would get the first pick of the first half, so I would take mine, and then Nick would get his pick 
of half of whatever's left. Again, rounded up. So he would essentially, he'd get this one tile here. Um, what's going to happen at this point is that you can build any dinosaur um, skeletons that, that you have enough pieces to build. So there's, there's one that's just one single piece. I didn't manage to pick any of those up, but that looks like this right here. So if I had picked this up, I would just reveal this, and this would count for me uh, as a completed skeletal structure that I have finished. There's also ones that have um, two pieces right here. So if I had connected these two pieces right here, uh, then I would get to score for this dinosaur. There's ones with three, four, and five pieces as well. And then there's also, like the one that Nick picked up this turn, there's also just some plant fossils. And those are worth... Uh, just a straight point. Yeah, they're just worth points, and it's worth more points the more of them you have. Um, so that's basically it. On your turn, like I said, you first sharpen three chisels, then you spend any number of chisels you want to in the field. If you break off part of the fossil layer, then you split that up. Um, you can interact with the field leader, and then if you want to, you can save one chisel uh, for future turns. Um, the, there's an optional part that we are going to be playing with today. We're at the beginning of the game. Each player is dealt one or two of these cards right here. We're just going to start with one. Um, and basically, they are going to be cards that we can reveal at any point during our turns in the future uh, to potentially affect the game in some way or another. Um, so I have one that, that's kind of neat that um, I get to do something when I complete a particular type of fossil. Um, Nick just showed you his, so you kind of know what his looks like. Um, and that's basically it. What's going to happen is eventually this field will continue to shrink as we... Uh, so I would get all these back, Nick would get his back, and it would be on to the next player's turn. Eventually this field is going to shrink up pretty good till there's only just a few tiles left. When we get to a point where there's only two tiles left... On a player's turn, they're going to break up the tiles, and then they're going to get one, and the field leader is going to get the other, and that will be the end of the game. At the end of that round, we're going to go ahead and calculate all of our points based on all of the completed dino skeletons that we've been able to uh, assemble throughout the course of the game, as well as any um, plant... Um, uh, fossils that we have acquired throughout the course of the game. Um, and that's that's where we get all of our points. We also get um, points from Amber, which we accumulate when we complete uh, dinosaur skeletal structures. And the Amber can either be points at the end of the game or it's one of the ways that we can purchase things from our field leader over here. Um, and that is basically it. There's a few other things I didn't touch on. Like, for example, um, we have these some of these face-down tiles here. We don't know what those are until they're excavated. Um, there are also tiles that have rocks printed on their edges. So to get through them, you have to spend an additional chisel. So to get through this space here, I'd have to spend one chisel just to break up the rocks and then another chisel to actually put my chisel here in play. And where there are two rocks side by side, you actually have to spend one chisel for, for each rock. So I'd have to spend three chisels just to bust through this rock right here. One to break up this rock, one to break up this rock, and one to actually place my chisel here on the board. Expensive. Yeah. Um, and that is basically Jurassic Parts. This is a Very quick cool. quick and dirty overview. Oh, yeah. Um, and we're going to go ahead and get started, I think. Right, Nick? Yeah. Let's go ahead and jump into Jurassic Parks by 25th Century Games, and we'll get back to you guys midway through the game. All right. Toodles! Hey, welcome back, Meeple people, and hello, Sarah. Hi there. So how's it going in midway through our Jurassic Park game? Well, it's going pretty good. We just had a pretty big split um, where we uh, split off a whole bunch of tiles right here. I had forgotten that um, when you split tiles, you get at most six tiles. So I split off a group of 14 with Nick's help, thinking that we I would get seven and then he would get four. Um, but I actually got six because of that limit. And then he got four. Um, 
So that was a little less than optimal on my part, but I did it anyway. And from that, I was able to get some fossils to complete a couple of different dinosaurs. I've got a T-Rex, or I'm sorry, a Triceratops over here, and then the couple of Velociraptors, and then these little guys. Um, I didn't get all that from that one split, but that's what I was able to complete recently. And what you have so far, I guess. Right? Yeah, yeah, what I have so far. I've also got a few of the uh, plant fossils, um, and I've got some amber to work with as well. Nice. If you don't spend the amber in the game, then it's worth points at the end. So even if the game ends and I haven't used this, they'll be worth something at that point. Nice. I still have my in-game one-time ability card thing here that I haven't used. So um, do I. Mine might be a little hard to pull off, especially at this point in the game, but we'll see. Um, so how's it going over there for you, um, Dr. Ted Park? It's going all right. Uh, I've gotten, I've, I'm working on a, a big one, and I also have some little ones made. Um, and me and my, me as Dr. Ted Park here, I think we're doing pretty well. We got, we're working on a, a big site coming up. Hopefully it will crack off and give us a good little hole. But we'll see, because uh, this game goes by pretty fast. You're, you're, you know, one in a two-player game. I suspect maybe even in, in every game. But uh, we're kind of flying through, and because we're going for nice big, big chunks when only we still only get six. But yeah. I intended to read to our viewers the uh, the little bios for our characters. Would you like me to do that, Nick? Yes, please. All right. So I am playing Dr. Naomi Grant, who is a recent graduate from the University of Oxford. And this is Naomi's first large-scale excavation. She's a third-generation paleontologist and is so good she can spot amber in her sleep. And Nick is playing Dr. Ted Park. Ted originally wanted to be a rocket scientist, but after watching... Uh, too many summer blockbusters on dinosaur parks. He transformed into, I'm uh, sorry, he transferred to the California Institute of Technology to get a doctorate in geoscience. Very cool. So fun little bios there for our characters. Yours kind of looks like Dora though. Da, 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 got Dora. A, got a little Dora vibe going on. A little on. bit. But all right, so shall we jump back and figure out who's going to be the winner and the loser? Let's do it. Who's going to be reigning supreme on? being the top excavator. Let's do it. All right. So we're going to go ahead and dive right back into Jurassic Parts by 25th Century Games, and we'll come back at the end slash wrap up and then move to the final discussion. All right. Toodles. Welcome back, Meeple people, and hello, Sarah. Hello. So, Sarah, what happened at the end of the game? I won. You as a winner, winner, chicken dinner. I had accumulated some okay fossils. Uh, yeah. I don't have Just like, okay. the greatest. I got a bunch of these little guys, um, and Nick had some nice big ones. But Nick was also ignoring the plant fossils, and I was able to accumulate quite a few plant fossils. And just from this pile alone, I was able to manage 20 points. Yeah. So. You got a lot of points through that. And I was just like, ooh, forgot about that one. <laughs> I was looking at the score chart like, oh, yeah, the plants, they get you so many points if you have a lot. And I fed her quite a bit. Yeah. He just kept throwing them away. And I was like, well, okay, I'll take them. I'll take and then she bought from the yeah, uh, field leader. Just some extra ones from the field leader. Field leader's like, I just got some of these extra bones and plant fossils. Do you want like, some? I'll take some. Here, let me buy all this from you. I did. I bought two plant fossils from him, uh, and that got me an extra, let's see, I went from having 11 points to 20, so I got an extra 9 points from buying. Noise. Noise. Um, All right. So, yeah. So, yeah. Okay, well, we're going to go ahead and move on to our final discussion. We'll see you guys in a second. Toodles! Hey, Meeple people, how's it going? And this is our final thoughts on Jurassic Parts by 25th Century Games. Before we get into our final thoughts, we want to apologize for the... I'm sorry. It, it was my fault. I accidentally <laughs> muted my microphone. I didn't even know you could do that to this microphone. And I thought I took that feature off, so it wouldn't mute accidentally. Sorry. So it is what it is. It happens. Technical issues happen. And <laughs> yeah. So back to our final thoughts on Jurassic Parts. 
Um, I, I think I'll start off on this yeah, one. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> some giggle pants. Uh, so the Jurassic Parts is a very quick fast-paced game i think for at least us we were we, yeah. were we were slicing through it real quick yeah i think if you're i don't know about this can go up neighbors. to five so yeah. i would suspect that with more players it would slow down just a little, just a bit, little bit maybe as more people thought about what they wanted to do and, yeah. and that kind of stuff but uh the production was pretty good I the the pieces the first player piece was really cool. Yeah, it was like this little mosquito in amber sort of looking thing. Yeah, it was pretty which neat. Was pretty neat. Production overall was great. I yeah. Think. Oh yeah, definitely. And the amber pieces, it was kind of like your. Uh, you see them in a lot of other games, but your amber pieces were still pretty cool. Well, and to me, they seemed like amber pieces. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes people are like, "This is a bloodstone" or whatever, and you're like, "Okay, whatever." It's just but, a red rock. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but thanks. to me, this one really seemed like it was bits of amber. You know. Yeah. And. um the chisels were nice, little plastic chisels were. They had good. some heft to them too. They were. Yeah. They look like standard, like plastic pl- playing pieces, but they're actually a little weighty. Cool, um, but in gameplay, I, I really liked the kind of chiseling out part of the board and then moving it away. It kind of felt like a more uh, adult version of "Hey, that's my fish" from Fantasy Flight. Okay, yeah, I could see that. And I liked how you were also trying to collect, not just mindlessly chop off pieces and. Uh, keep them to try to get points but you're trying to actually strategically get points and like in our game i kind of forgot about the um the plant, uh, the fossils. plant fossils and that screwed me and or gave up a lot of points doing that but uh this is a nice little quick game and uh it, get, it gets you thinking a little bit not too much um but i mean I, I, I certainly enjoyed it. What were your thoughts? Yeah, I liked it a lot, too. I don't have a ton of exposure to 25th Century games. I think this is only the second 25th Century game I've ever played, actually. Um, but so far, it's my favorite by far. Yeah. Um, we have a couple of other ones that they sent us for the channel. They that- just sent us, like, another one, too, so we're like... <laughs> so they've sent us a few for the channel that we will eventually play and put on the channel as well. Um, so that may change, but for right now, this one is my favorite. I really, yeah. really like this this one um it it it's fun it's easy to teach easy to learn easy to play quick to learn quick to play um but it feels like a very satisfying experience yeah, you don't not, feel like you're shorted out or anything like it's that not like a filler game it's an actual like yeah you want yeah to play yeah it's actually like a, a real not that filler games aren't yeah. real but it's actually like you know a real play experience um in a short period of time so yeah. i really like your that. feel for it yeah or your fill i should say you get your fill for it yeah yeah i really liked that it doesn't overstay its welcome um it it lasts like i think the perfect amount of time yeah and the cards uh, the, the one-time abilities that you get during the game were very cool and yeah and there's we, a lot of those yeah. that you can um kind of change up and, and play with they said yeah. it's kind of optional you can play with like one or two or none so i think playing with like the different cards and maybe even like different combinations of those yeah. cards could introduce some some replayability as well yeah definitely um i liked it i, th- I liked like nick was saying when you're looking at the field you don't want to just like break off oh well that's a giant chunk i'll get a bunch of stuff sometimes that's a good way to do things but really like you want to be kind of st- kind of strategic and you're like oh i need that particular piece and i can finish this one fossil yeah. um you know so i want to make sure that i get that one in the split or that kind of thing um so there was definitely some like some subtle uh, strategies that that were going on in the game, and I thought that that was really fun. I thought it was really thematic, oh, yeah, um, and definitely. I liked the theme. I thought it was a really fun theme. Yeah, um, it wasn't like you're getting hunted or you're hunting. <laughs> it was more like you're just you know excavating. Yeah, and you're excavating dinosaur bones, which was a lot of fun. And and it felt like it had that same sort of, I don't know, a whole heck of a lot about being you know a um paleontologist i guess or like someone in the field who would do this kind of work but it felt like that's the way that it would be in the field where it's a cooperative effort but you know definitely you want to be the one who finds like the you 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 want to be the the best one one or one with the most stake in the yeah exactly exactly so it definitely made me feel like um based on my perceptions of what it would be like to excavate fossils that this, yeah. this brought a very, you know, true to life sort of feeling to the game itself. Definitely. Um, I really like this one. Yeah. We would definitely recommend it if you want to have a nice lighter, but still thinky type game with great components. And yeah, 
I definitely check this one out from 25th Century Games. So I mentioned this on a previous um, video that we did for the channel for a different game from a different publisher, but um, this one also has spot gloss, not just on the cover, but also on the game pieces themselves, yeah. which was really cool. I love spot gloss. It adds just this this whole um, new layer of, of class. Some flair. And, yeah, and flair. And um, it was really fun to see the spot gloss, not just on the box, but also on the components, the pieces that made up the, um, the field as well. So that yeah. was a really neat little extra too. Definitely. Well, that was our final thoughts on uh, Jurassic Parts from 25th Century Games. We hope you all enjoyed it. Subscribe for more content from us, so you can s oh, and also you can stay up to date. And, and I think we should probably do another giveaway soon. Yes, we should. We should definitely we should definitely get on that. <laughs> we have a lot of games to give away and uh, a lot of things to move. But yeah, so definitely stay tuned for that. Well, until next time, we'll catch y'all later. Toodle.